been a seven-hour journey by plane from Mumbai to Seoul. And here I am at the Seoul International Airport, but the ride to the city from here is about an hour away. So, let's begin our journey. Stretching for about a thousand kilometers from the eastern end of the Asian continent, this is the Korean Peninsula. The scars of the Korean War have faded. Memorials like this one stand in testimony and pray for peace. Over the last 50 years, Korea has moved on. This is a country transformed. I'm at an observatory in Korea, just two kilometers away, across the river, that's North Korea. This is the country, the Korea that I'm in, which is known for its technology, the development that it has seen over the last many years. From here, we're headed to Seoul. A dynamic city with great infrastructure. This is Seoul, home to 10 million people. It's a city where K-pop is big, with its mixed stars from pop to rap. Seoul is the capital of this country, and it has been for 600 years since the Joseon dynasty that once ruled Korea from this palace, standing strong amidst a vibrating city. I've just walked into 600 years of Korean history. This is from where the Joseon dynasty, the kings of there, all 27 of them, up till 1926 ruled Korea. This is the Changdok Palace in Seoul. And the way the palace is laid out, you can see the geometrical shape against the topography, which is pretty uneven. It really does stand out. But I'm about to see the throne from where the king would hold his court. What strikes me is the simplicity of the palace. The Joseon rulers believed in being one with nature. And so, they use a wood everywhere and the color green in the art within. Also, quite ingenious in the way they stayed warm in the cold, cold winters. Right now, we are in sub-zero temperature. In the past, of course, they didn't have central heating. So, how do they keep themselves warm? They use those crevices to be able to light up charcoal. And the warmth would spread all around because they would have a layer of uh, stone, then they would have clay and paper right on top. And that's how the warmth would be all encompassing and that's how they'd keep themselves warm in winter. And the smoke that would be generated through the charcoal would emanate from these pretty looking chimneys. Open Gangnam Star. From a taste of history, cut to the present. And a song and singer that you just can't get out of your head. Especially when you're in a place called Gangnam in Seoul. When you're in Seoul in Korea, you cannot get Sai out of your mind and the song that plays in your head is Gangnam Star. Guess where I am? That's the name of the station. It's Gangnam Station and if the song is playing in your head, what do you do? Well, you sing along and you dance along like this. Open Gangnam Star. But here I am to go to Samsung Delight and see how they're going to delight me right now. Let's go. News anchor is one thing, but really, when you want to be a movie star, this is where you come. You stand right here. That's what it says here at Samsung Delight. And this is my chance at my two minutes of fame. I'm going to become a movie star. Take a look at this. The camera has come on. The crew comes on as well. And the director is giving me very, very strong instructions. I have no idea what he's saying. And that's my first scene. Oh, I'm on a bike. Whoa! This one's coming on really strong. And I don't know if I'm riding the bike or the bike is riding me. Here comes the big one again, trying to knock me over. A little bit like Arnold Schwarzenegger over here in Terminator. And there I go. Oh, boom! And crash and everything's burning. This is a movie star. I feel like one as well. What do you know? But then, if you're seeking a journey into original Korean life, then head to the Korean folk village. Spread over nearly 250 acres of land, 
based on Feng Shui principles with a river flowing through it, replete with live performances. The traditional harvest dance of people from the Joseon dynasty. Believe it or not, watching them swirl and twirl can whip up quite an appetite. It's time to try some authentic Korean food. We have steaming hot food over here. This is a traditional Korean dish. It's a bibimbap. You'll find vegetables over here. And obviously it goes with certain sauces that come with it. Also, this is soup. Essentially, it's called kukpa, but you'll find rice, vegetables and uh, all made in a nice hot soup. Here, you find all kinds of vegetables. This is a tutori muk. Really nice and spicy from what I can see right now. I'm dying to try it out. And obviously, from what you're seeing over here, this is a pancake. It's made of potatoes. So, a large spread. Rice to go with it as well. Let's begin. And here I am serving myself a bowl of traditional Korean rice wine. Apparently it goes very well with the potato pancakes that I'm having. So, cheers to Korea. Apart from the many acts you can catch at the village, you will also learn a thing or two about crime and punishment in the days of yore in Korea. As comfortable as I'm looking, sitting over here, this is a place where great pain was inflicted. Your convicts in the Joseon dynasty, this is where they were made to lie. I'll show you how. Like this. Face down and very uncomfortable. And this is what was used to inflict that pain right on the butt. Very painful. The thought of all that pain has me craving for some tea. And in Korea, you've got to have tea the Korean way. Nothing quite like Suchonghua just after a meal. The Koreans like to keep it healthy, which is why they don't do dessert so much as much as they like their tea in a traditional setting like this. And this one, with cinnamon, pine nuts, honey and ginger in it, it's quite heavenly. You should try it. And it's time to get back on the trail. My destination next, a convention center. You can spot it from a distance. I'm at the Kintex Convention Center. This is the largest convention center in all of Korea. And I'm about to see a contemporary art exhibition. This is just one hall inside Kintex. It measures around 20,000 square feet. There are about 10 such halls and together Kintex would be about 15 football grounds put together. But here, in this hall, I'm surrounded by art created by young Korean artists. is refreshing, but the rumble in the tummy brings me here. Well, if I ever thought I would have to say goodbye to Indian food for the duration of my trip to Korea, boy, am I in for a surprise. It's time to try some Indian food in Korea. Here comes some palak paneer. Got some dal going. And then there is garlic naan. Spices are a little subdued. They're used to more spices. 
this one has a little more sweet taste to it. I think the Koreans like it that way. My first taste of Korea. It leaves me wanting more. So to the tourist information center I head, where I get to know of a serene volcanic island in the south of the peninsula. I make up my mind, Jeju Island is where I'm heading next. And Jeju, as it turns out, is truly Treasure Island.